Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in Eve Online. And uh, today is actually take two of Eve Talk, so I tried to do an Eve Talk from the star. Uh, but uh, let me quickly go over some of the problems that I encountered there. First of all, of course, um, you really don't have anything extra uh, from the experience except for like extra background noise the biggest problem is that if you want to enjoy some of that scenery during eve talk i would have to uh, unpin to uh, make this um the window translucent but the price history becomes completely unreadable at that point so i'm going to definitely have to keep this um, uh, fully uh, from being translucent like this and and then going to a star just adds absolutely nothing and then another crazy thing happened is that um, of course being out there for like half an hour you attract some attention and uh, all of a sudden someone showed up started f uh, shooting fireworks at me and actually because of that i think my graphics cards crashed so uh, that one is, is starting to maybe show some first signs of problems um, and uh, yeah we're gonna do it in in a more um, controlled uh, situation here which is going to be within the station hangar so I'm not exactly sure uh, what's happening with the graphics card I'll need to pay attention to that maybe uh, think about purchasing uh, an extra one uh, just in case this one gives up on me or something like that but um, let's go we are here for eve talk of course and as always we are going to start with plex that is going to be at 140 there we go and the plex chart is pretty interesting so we can see that uh, we went up to almost 3.5 million isk for a plex then the plex sale hits very hard after the decrease in price and actually pushed the price of plex to less than 3 million isk but that's where the market says that's a pretty good buy opportunity we're going to uh, take advantage of that and as a result here plex have jumped back up from that 3 million uh, price mark. Plex are currently being sold uh, in Gita for 3.1 million. Uh, the bars are at 3 million. And if we go to the uh, stations around us, then we do have Plex being sold for just above 3 million ISK and the bars are at 3 million exactly. Very, very narrow margin here between the buyers and the sellers. Next up, we'll take a look at the multiple pilot training certificate. That one is going up quite substantially. That is because the sales uh, for this item have been uh, a bit different from the Plex sales at different timings. You can see that right here uh, in July when we went down to almost 1.1 billion ISK. Currently though, we're back up to 1.4 billion ISK for a multiple pilot training certificate. In fact, a little bit above that, a little bit of 1.4 billion and the bars are at 1.3 billion. So around a billion margin between these two and this is actually pretty normal with plex at 3 million that means that you're paying 1.5 billion for 30 days game time and that is during the sale and here the train certificate is almost at 1.5 billion but a little bit less because it is actually a little bit cheaper to buy the training certificate from ccp next up we have of course the skill extractors as expected this is following the plex price very very closely just below 350 million at the moment and we can see that these are being sold for 342 million isk whereas the buyers are at 334.6 million isk and uh, that's a bit more of a margin between, uh, in the skill extractors compared to the plex prices and it seems like here 340 million is probably going to be the defended price by the market whereas for plex it was a clear 3 million isk that was being defended by the market on the downtrend you also don't see the the massive volume increase that we do see in plex that pulled the price back down but you see the effect of course of the decreased plex prices on the chart here as well very very close correlation this does make the skill injectors potentially very interesting and i think that this is pretty interesting because you can see this early drop together with the first drop in plex uh, which is normal plex went up to a very high price point so we had a normal market correction after that this was exacerbated by a plex sale from ccp to bring the price of plex back down to like 3 million isk but the skill injector said no 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 that's not what we're going to do anything below 750 million is definitely a good buy and we're actually going back up in price already uh, to the current sell price of 785 million isk and the buyers are at 775 million isk so pretty narrow margin here again as well but 
I think that uh, this makes the skill injectors very interesting uh, and I do think that these will become the more popular store of value uh, when it comes to protecting your assets from inflation. I think you'll want to pour um, at least as much in the skill injectors as you're pouring into Plex um, just because they have this added potential when it comes to the demand for skill points in the game and, and you can see the difference here plex on sale going down in price well skill injectors nope we are going up in price increasing the margin for skill point farms and of course potentially being a pretty good investment at the moment uh, well uh, it was potentially a pretty good investment right now we're of course at very high prices once again so it's, it's very tricky uh, to say that yeah at this cl uh, close to one year high you should invest in large skill injectors but i think if you spot opportunities in both plex and the skill injectors that you might want to take a look at the injectors because of the potential um, added volatility and added potential of the skill points themselves and then the large skill inject uh, the small skill injectors are of course doing something very similar going up to 160 million isk 158 for the sellers and 151.5 for the buyers of these small skill injectors so yeah plex prices everything is still basically adapting a little bit to the plex sale that happened uh, like a week ago next up we'll move on to some minerals that's going to be at 6 30. There we go. And uh, Tritanium, it's not bad. I think it's trying to hold on to the current price, which is just below 6 ISK. And I think that this is actually really good. If you look at the entire chart here, you can see that we are close to pre-ascension prices. So not bad for the Isaac miners that want to mine some Tritanium. You're actually getting, once again, a pretty good price for that. Currently, sellers will definitely want to get rid of that filter. 11 and 8 jumps is not what we want to see. Sellers are at 596 and the buyers are at 5. 564 so 550 definitely being defended by demand here although uh, 300 million 100 million it's not as much as the 1 billion that's being dumped here and the 1 billion that's being dumped here but the market is is somewhat trying to keep the price of tritanium uh, close to 6 isk and definitely above 5.5 at the moment are we oversupplied i would say yes uh, the entire competition is happening right here 2 billion 1.7 billion 1.5 billion so tritanium could lose a bit of ground because of this but hopefully that will stay pretty limited and uh, that way uh, i do think that um, there is a chance that we'll get back to some normalcy in the mineral market after well the ascension roar call gap that was been uh, that has been created uh, which you can see right here in the middle of the bloody chart uh, next up we have pyrite so we saw last week that pyrite may have been priced a little bit as well to above six isk which brought it back in line with um, uh, i would say the yields that you normally get for pyrite compared to tritanium should make pyrite more expensive and so currently pyrite is being sold for um, almost 6.5 isk and the bars are above six isk so this is back into a bit more normal territory although i think that pyrite could be a little bit higher compared to tritanium at least it is already higher than tritanium so we still as you can see have a long way to go to get back to before ascension prices uh, that is, is uh, well we still need to basically go up 50 percent for that but at least we went up in price and we're not crashing back down right away we're actually managing to maintain this current price a little bit better Next up, we've got a Mixalon. That is, I think, really good news as well here because Mixalon is managing to maintain this price of just below 80 ISK on average, which is a very good price, even historically speaking, even compared to the price before Ascension. And uh, that means that there must be very strong demand for Mixalon at the moment. Sellers are at 80 ISK, buyers are at 75. 26 isk and what i find very interesting is how close the chart here is to 80 isk that i think means that uh, it's actually the sellers of mixalon that are dictating most of the price at the moment and as a result i think that this means that there still is this very high demand from nullsec to export Me uh, mixalon from Jita to their uh, own uh, manufacturing trade hubs um, back in Nullsec and as a result you have this 80 isk on the sellers but you also have an average price very close to that which means that you can have this patience you can try to sell that isk for uh, that mix on for as much as possible and you're probably going to find a buyer very easily 
uh, because the demand is not just local it's not just the market doing its thing there's actual extra demand very strong extra demand from Nelsec for all of this Mexilon as well and so even the fact that we're seeing 170 million here 66 million here and nothing like that on the bars I think doesn't mean that we are massively oversupplied uh, in the Mexilon market very good news I think again for Isaac miners you know what to do if you are mining focus on Mexilon and if you're running out of options go for some Tritanium. Next up we've got Isogen. Um, you can see where we started here. 90 ISK Isogen used to be more expensive than Mexilon. It's still hanging around at 50 ISK. Um, it went up in price a little bit and is trying to hold on to that increase once again. Isogen is being sold for 52 ISK and the bars are above 50 ISK but this is a completely a crazy situation when you look at the yields and and, and the normal uh, so, uh, normal situation in the uh, mineral market. Mixalon should be cheaper than Isogen or Isogen should be more expensive than Mixalon. And so that means, in my opinion, that if you're looking to still pour some ISK into the mineral market and um, you, you want a chance at a good increase in price, I would look at Isogen at the moment because you can also see this from the beginning of the chart. Uh, used to be 65 ISK uh, for Mixalon before the Ascension expansion. Isogen used to be 80 to 90 ISK. That is the normal situation. It's completely reversed. Mexilon is holding on strong. But even if, let's say, Mexilon would lose like 10% of the price down to around 70, you still have this uh, massive potential of 30 ISK on 50 ISK purchase uh, just to bring Isogen back in line with Mexilon when it comes to uh, normal yields that you get for refining uh, the, uh, the minerals. So I think that this, this could potentially be one of those uh, situations that that will at some point rectify itself uh, just because of the nature of the two minerals and uh, that would I think make Isogen uh, a very interesting uh, place to maybe pour some is definitely not all too much of it but um, this is one that I'm not selling uh, until I'm actually seeing this above Mixalon once again I think. Next up we've got Noxium and this is pretty damn interesting as a loud bicycle passes by. Uh, so Noxium went up in price back to above 400 ISK pretty violently in a matter of a couple of weeks. Not bad at all, even close to the pre-ascension prices. And so Noxium is currently being sold for 401 ISK and the buyers are at 401 ISK. Tiniest margin possible, just 0 0.01 here and uh, that does mean that somehow there is strong demand for Noxium here all of a sudden. Uh, very interesting, definitely not expected. But another sign that maybe um, some no more normal market forces are starting to uh, have their influence on the mineral market, which I would say uh, Isogen is the last one that, that still needs to, uh, to really be rectified by, by quite a bit here. So Anoxium, very interesting, uh, definitely a nice increase in price here from 322 up to 400 is 28 at the best but at the moment still being sold for 400 isk that is not a bad increase in price uh, for people that managed to purchase at this early august bottom right here after that we've got some uh, nulsic minerals so zydrine jumping up in price quite nicely from a thousand isk to 1200 isk and trying to defend that price point uh, it will of course go down just a little bit uh, at the tail end here 11.97 for the sellers, 11.30 uh, for the buyers, and so Zydrine up in price uh, quite decently. Of course, you do see the decent supplies that are coming in because of that. And then we've got Megasite, which uh, also went up in price and went up to 13.50. Last time, currently actually being sold for 1,420 ISK, so a, a second jump up. Uh, in Megasite, which is actually in line with the Zydrine uh, increase in price. So here I would say that the Nulsec uh, market has definitely normalized quite a little bit. It used to always be like that. If Zydrine goes up, Megasite goes up as well, because that should be tied to the same source. And whatever is happening to increase or crash one of the prices should be happening in both of those minerals. As so a 1424 mega site, not a bad price, 1328 for the buyers as well. Um, so that's a healthy, decent difference here. And so I think basically increased in demand due to these volumes jumps us up to 1400 is for mega site, which I would say is uh, not bad at all. 
And then the best news, here is more fights, 11,000 ISK, definitely a very nice increase in price and uh, the one that I'm going to have to sell after this EVE talk. 11,500 for the sellers, 10,800 for the buyers and just a couple of months ago here we were buying more fights for close to 8,000 ISK I think. Um, on the best opportunities so more fights uh, not bad and finally um, if like me you have some more fight stocks that you bought at some of these really low more fight prices your patience will finally have paid off this is the time to sell of course um, I'm gonna try to sell before this if talk comes out so that I can take my profits but there you go uh, some action in Nulsec causing some uh, speculation and some differences in the mineral market and finally our more fight went up in price quite substantially very good to see next up we have some pi that's gonna be at 1550 Having gone through these ones before, uh, it does speed things up a little bit. So here are the construction blocks and uh, I think that this is pretty damn interesting. So you can see that uh, we went up in price to around 13,000 ISK for the construction blocks. But we had to give ground and we're actually playing with 11k on some average days here. So 11, uh, 12,000 for the sellers, 11,167 for the buyers. Uh, definitely below average here for the construction blocks and a little bit unexpected in my book we basically have a mid to late august buy opportunity in the construction blocks the real question is gonna be will we see this pattern come back in some of the other ones and then there may still be hope for a late summer september buy opportunity in pi which uh, was right here early august for instance in construction blocks when we were playing with 11k that was definitely a buy opportunity and here all of a sudden a second one has formed very interesting Unfortunately, the consumer electronics are still heading up towards 15,000 ISK and uh, are being sold for 16,500 and the buyers are at 14,300 ISK. So this pattern doesn't show up in the consumer electronics just yet, although the increase in price here is definitely slower than the previous ones. So maybe, let's hope, that uh, this will actually stall and then we might actually be on our way back down. Uh, the reason I'm saying this, of course, I went uh, through some of these before, uh, just about uh, 45 minutes ago, I think. And uh, here in coolants, you can see that pattern start to show up. So while in the last few months we did go up, we went up definitely more slowly than the last increase in price. And at the tail end here, you can see some hesitation on the five day moving average. Coolants currently being sold for 12,750 and the buyers are at 12,200. So the buyers probably around average, sellers a little bit above average, but not by that much. And interestingly enough here at the tail end, we're seeing some hesitation. So if this can keep going and if construction blocks are a bit like the canary in the coal mine, uh, then uh, yeah, we do wanna keep a close eye on uh, PI in the next few weeks and through September to maybe see if uh, a buy opportunity doesn't show up. Next up here we get the enriched uranium. That one went down quite violently early August. So a little bit of a, a comeback here may be uh, normal. Uh, currently being sold for 16,000 ISK. You can see that there is decent supply coming in. And the bars at 15,400 with 91,000 units. There is also pretty strong supply in enriched uranium. Uh, the truth is that enriched uranium is pretty tricky to make. So it's a little bit different. You can see that the bottom is actually at 12,500 ISK. Whereas for most refined PI material, the average is uh, around 12,500. That's the bottom for this one. Uh, I would say that it makes enriched uranium a bit more tricky uh, to uh, invest in, to, to actually spot those buy opportunities when they don't reach the, uh, the full bottom. Uh, but your potential returns may actually be better on this one as well, because it's gonna be a bit more tricky uh, to, uh, to actually uh, bring a lot of supply of this to the market. Next up, we get the integrity response drones. Now, there is of course a bit of difference uh, when it comes to the PI materials that are related to structures. Uh, there is very strong demand for those and you can see that we went up to almost 3 million ISK on average. 2.8 million for the sellers, 2.8 million almost for the buyers. Unfortunately, yeah, 2.5 million, which we would like to see or even lower uh, as a buy opportunity. It's not gonna happen uh, anytime soon, I don't think so. If you are still looking for some of this PI material for a structure or as an investment, you are going to have to pay a pretty serious premium. 
Next up here we get the mechanical parts. And this is the pattern that I was talking about. So for a couple of months we went up to above average, almost 14,000 ISK. Currently being sold for 12,850. First one coming in here, 13,000 you could say for most of them. And then the bars are 12,550. So sellers at a bit of above average bars as well uh, for mechanical parts. But at the tail end here, once again, you can see the 5 day moving average crossing 20 day moving average. You have this hesitation and uh, hopefully this will have some momentum as well. Next up here we get the nuclear reactors, once again the pattern shows up at the tail end here, 5 day moving average crossing, 20 day moving average on the downturn, uh, nuclear reactor still being sold for 121,000 ISK, the bars are at 105,000 ISK, but you can see here that we are running out of these buyers above 100,000 ISK. We just need to fill one more and then we're at 86,000 ISK. If more supply comes in at that point, then we'll see this drastically drop all of a sudden on the chart. And then you will have a very nice buy opportunity in the nuclear reactor. So if you want to gamble now, then I would say start putting up your first buy orders below 100,000 ISK. Try to pick up some of those cheaper nuclear reactors. It could happen very quickly, especially if you look at the hesitation in some of the others as well. Oxygen next, again, decently similar pattern, although we come from a from a bottom situation at 370, we go up to 500 disc, and here at the tail end, 5 day moving average, definitely wanting to stay quite a bit lower all of a sudden. Oxygen still being sold for 515, and the bars are at 532 here, again this wider margin I think could start to play a role, and uh, the beginnings of this pressure are clearly to be seen here. Robotics next, yet again the pattern confirms itself, while it was a pretty sharp increase in price in less than in just a couple of weeks to more than 110,000 ISK. You can see here at the tail end that we are once again hesitating. Robotics being sold for 108,000 ISK and the bars just above 100,000 ISK. So here again, if this has potential to continue, then we may be in interesting territories late summer or in September. Rocket fuel next, um, that one still going up in price, but f coming from a very clear buy opportunity, I think I did call to close to, uh, uh, of close to 10,000 ISK. Currently being sold for 13,000 ISK and the bars at 12,100. I think that puts rocket fuel a little bit above average on the sellers and right around average for the buyers. And here again at the very tail end, maybe a little bit of hesitation, although that could probably still go either way. Self-harmonizing power cores related to structures, so that's not good news. Average price is 2.5 million, sellers 2.5, buyers 2.2 million. So we would like to see 2 million come into play if you actually want to uh, buy this uh, for yourself. But it's just not going to happen, I don't think. Superconductors next, again, a couple months of going up towards 15,000 ISK. And here at the tail end, we can see that the 5-day moving average wants to cross the 20-day moving average. 14,000 for the sellers, 13,500 for the buyers. Much smaller margin here, so superconductors are hesitating a little bit. Uh, but I think that it could definitely happen here. Next up, we've got test cultures, uh, one of my other long-term investments where I bought them for very cheap. Slightly going up in price, but still nowhere near where I would like to sell them at. So 8,741 for the sellers, 7,820 for the buyers. Still pretty cheap on the buyer side of things. Test cultures for less than 8,000 ISK. Um, but first signs of uh, prices potentially going back up here are being shown. We'll, I'll just need patience for my test culture investment. And finally, we have wetware mainframes after going up quite sharply to 2.5 million. We're gaining ground just a little bit, but of course we would like to see 2 million if you actually want to purchase those. And 2.5 for the sellers, 2.4 for the buyers. Again, uh, I think it's going to be very unlikely. We would basically need uh, my, uh, my hope to, to come through. We would need to see a serious pullback in all of them, creating several buy opportunities in the upcoming weeks. And that would then have to be sustained a little bit and pushed through to these uh, advanced PI materials that are related to structures. And I don't think it's going to happen. I personally think that um, it could still be quite interesting in some of these refined PI materials, like construction blocks right now, for instance. But we will need to keep a very close eye on it and we will need to be very quick on any buy opportunity because I do think that the market keeps a close enough eye on all of this that it's never going to last more than a couple of days. So that's it for PI. Next up, we are going to talk about the Take One chips. Um, at 2540, uh, 2445. 
like that. And uh, here I took a couple of requests. So you can see that I added the Typhoon and the Scythe. And uh, I used those to replace the Megatron and the Scorpion. Um, so uh, Typhoon, of course, very actively being flown in Nostic by the Imperium. And uh, then another battleship, uh, the Megatron. I don't think it was doing all that much. And so I went with the Scythe instead, which was a request. Let's start off with the Abaddon. That is actually doing very well at the moment, going up to almost uh, 210 million isk a little bit down at the tail end but of course from a one year high that's no surprise you can see stronger demands with increased volumes right there so the abaddon basically actively being flown in nalsic at the moment 196 for the sellers 174 for the buyer decent margin but also decent demands um the bad news is that the pullbacks are pretty sharp, uh, so uh, this is going to get filled up decently quickly uh, by fresh supply. So once the action stops in Nullsec, uh, be careful, that might mean that, um, that prices will go down very quickly for the Abaddon. The Caracal, pretty interesting to jump up to 11 million ISK on higher volumes all of a sudden. So here what I think you should note is that we again go to less than 9.5 million on average. And then the Nullsec Alliance spots that opportunity and buys, uh, I think this was around 1500 units uh, in a couple of days, increasing the price to 11 million ISK. So 10.7 for the sellers. Uh, the bad news, of course, the Alliance probably bought everything below 11 million. First one's coming in, it's 191. Then we've got another 59 of them being sold at 10.7 million. These opportunities in the Tech One market last uh, just for, for a couple of days at the most. It's very, very tricky to actually take advantage of these uh, big buys from Alliances. Buyers are still at 9.9 .9 million, so less than 10 million for the Caracal buyers. And then you can basically expect this to drop off very, very sharply uh, unless a lot more would, have, would need to be bought uh, by those Nostic alliances all of a sudden, which is pretty unlikely. This is, I think, an opportunistic buy considering where it starts off. Next up, we've got the Coveter. Um, that one down to well around 25 million isk on average and here you do see an increased volume on a decreased price which is probably a bit of dumping of some extra coveters currently being sold for 24.1 million and the buyers are at 22.1 million very cheap coveters next up here we've got the ferox and the ferox is basically i think showing us what the we can expect in the caracal here so increased demand very nice volumes all of a sudden three four hundred that's another good uh, buy opportunity, 46.5 million. And we jumped up to 65 million ISK for a Ferox, not bad at all. But the response, of course, is that a lot of supply coming in and the Ferox is once again being sold for less than 50 million ISK bars or at 45.5 million. And that is basically the lesson, I think, that you need to learn uh, when it comes to the uh, tech one market, uh, especially if you're a newer player, but you do want to uh, get started in industry. I think the research that you need to do is which tech one doctrines do the big and active Nelsic alliances fly a lot. And then uh, just be ready to sell those at the right opportunity. Have those stocks ready beforehand. Don't just dump everything you're making straight to the market, but do your research make what's popular with the Nelsic Alliances and then wait for these right opportunities such as the Caracal right now and then uh, try to uh, yeah, to sell at better margins than what you can expect uh, anywhere else in the Tech One market because it's just so not in the meta right now that it's very difficult to make a lot of money in the Tech One production. Next up here we've got the Hurricane. You can see that that one had a very similar pattern. Increased volumes, price goes up to 55 million ISK but drops back down very quickly again a little bit more uh, buying happening on the active war so another opportunity at around 52 million is but at the moment hurricanes are uh, well being sold for 54 so still okay i would say and then 46 million for the buyers um, so yeah a bit of a double uh, opportunity hurricane is being flown decently actively uh, in Nelsic, I think, or by these alliances. And as a result, you have these opportunities, but again, you've got to be fast. Next up here, we've got the Maelstrom. Um, after dropping really low to like 160, we once again see a bit of purchasing happening, 70 units pushing the price back up. Maelstrom being sold for 195, almost 196 million ISK, and the bars at 154, very wide margin. Um, this again, I think, will get plugged decently quickly by the markets. 
Next up, we've got the Prophecy. Um, saw a bit of volatility in June, July, but now uh, is basically settling back towards that 50 million ISK range, 53.2 for the sellers, 47 million for the buyers. Uh, basically, pretty cheap prophecies at the moment. Next up, that's the request. Here is the site. Apparently, also being f well, no, I, I wouldn't say that this is. Here we have big purchase, but we don't really see a big purchase. You see a decrease in volumes actually, and the price goes up to 9.5 million. This is a standard cruiser, 9.4 for the sellers, 8.3 for the buyers. It's just basically a pretty cheap cruiser. Um, availability, well, average, I would say, uh, but up in price at the moment definitely back to pre-ascension prices which is not bad and i'm not seeing it in the volume so this is is really strange uh but the scythe is um maybe the market is willing to pay more for the site here all of a sudden uh, so that could be an interesting one to take a look at we'll see in the upcoming weeks if this actually pulls back down towards nine uh, or eight million even uh, on average which is what the site has done for quite a while interesting one comes very unexpected you would expect on a jump like this from 8 to 9.5 million you would expect to see uh, quite a bit more when it comes to volumes increase you do see some of it here though 113 and 137 and the current average is like 36 you see some of that um, but i'm not exactly sure if that's enough to really uh, say that yeah this is a big nasik buy happening because of a side fleet i do think that they're flown um, but there may be something else at play here as well on this increase in price. Next up here we've got the Typhoon and that is of course the uh, pattern that you should expect. Uh, increased uh, demand because of the Nasek war goes up to 200 million ISK. That demand drops off a little bit and is even getting massively oversupplied I think on this latest one. And currently Typhoons are being sold for 144 million ISK parts at 110. Extremely cheap Typhoons are back uh, in a matter of a couple of weeks maybe uh, on one of the most actively flown ships by the Imperium. So it's crazy fast how supply is going to plug those gaps. And finally, we've got the Vexor that is just doing its thing, staying just above 10 million most of the time. 10.4 for the sellers, 9.5 for the buyers. Very, very flat Vexor chart right here. So next up, we've got the Tech 2 market at 32.25. There we go. Let's go over these. Um, so I think that the war is mostly over. At least most of the hot action is over. There are some other strugglings that I'm reading on Reddit. Between Circle of Two and Test. Uh, that are uh, basically ending the bromance or something like that. Uh, but I think basically the big movers that does tend to be uh, PL, uh, NC, the Imperium. Uh, when all of those are on the move, that's when you get an interesting market. This is unfortunately dying down, so as a result, I do think that the Tech 2 market is going to start to die down as well. 25.8 for the sellers, 23 for the buyers. We're, we're basically this week, I think, going to be in the in-between uh, phase where you, it's too late to sell and it's going to be way too early to buy. So that's definitely the case for the uh, Aries. Here is the claw already going back down quite substantially. Where are the buyers at? 23.7. So again, uh, sellers 27 million can still be okay if, if you purchased those for 20 million back a couple of months ago. But of course, your opportunity is already over. You should have sold by now. And so here again, uh, too late to sell and too early to buy these claws. But the claws being flown very actively in the Imperium. So definitely want to keep at the back of your mind uh, because you could have sold those for like 40 million isk pretty easily uh, just like a, a week ago or something like that. Next up here we've got the crew also of course on its way back down. Um, 22 something like that for the bottom. Nope 25.6. So here again a bit too late to sell too early to buy. That's going to be the name of the game in tech 2 now uh, when the war ends of course. The Aries actually still slightly going up in price, it's going towards 60 million, um, 59 for the sellers, 54 the buyers here. You could still try to sell a couple of Aries if you happen to be able to make them or have those lying around. The Flycatcher next, um, here again dipping back below 70 million, so 70.7 for the sellers, 65 for the buyers. 
Yeah, we could still try to sell those, I suspect, but um, for the virus, we're, t we're definitely too early. Here is the heretic, very similar thing, goes up to 70 million, dropping back down, but we would definitely like to see 55 or 50 million come into play on the buyer side. 54 for the buyers, 64 for the seller. So you could still sell, you're a bit too late, the buyers. 54 is okay, uh, but honestly, 50 million would be better, of course. Next up, we've got the Hound here. Went up in price to 35 million. It's currently on its way back down. 29 for the sellers. Still a pretty good price, just not the best anymore. 25 million for the buyers. That's definitely 5 million too high. Malediction next. Also coming off of a peak at 30 million. Still being sold for 28.8. So not bad. But 25 for the buyers means that it's definitely too early to buy these. Uh, Manticore next, again very similar charts, jump up to 35 million, on its way back down, still selling for 31, not bad, if you can have picked those up for 21.5 or 22 million, definitely still sell those, but 27 for the buyers means that uh, if you're looking for that opportunity, uh, we're, we're probably, unless something major happens in Nelsic all of a sudden, probably just going to slowly settle back towards these, uh, this chart before that. Nemesis, very similar once again, buyers are still at 25.5, sellers 28.4, not bad, but not the best. Uh, purifier again also settling actually here average price going back down very quickly where are the buyers at 23 million so that's a no that's a bit of an anomaly um, still too early again uh, for the buyers and here 27 million probably a little bit too late as well when it comes to selling and finally we've got the saber that's doing a late jump up that's quite interesting 61 million for the sabers so if you want to sell something then uh, i hope that you have some sabers lying around this is completely unexpected uh, after the war after all the action uh, this is when the saber does its jump up that's a little bit crazy in my book but uh what can you say yep saber sell opportunity is basically uh the best action that i can spot in the tech 2 market which is to be expected of course um as the action in nosec dies down a bit next up we've got the tech 3 market at 37 minutes let's take a look at those um my expectations actually decently similar to the tech 2 mark so here we see the confessors for instance went up to more than 60 million isk probably going to be on its way back down yep sales coming in at 47.5 million bars are at 42 million um yeah the the, the tech 3 ships the tech 3 tactical destroyers definitely came in line with the tech 2s and maybe even uh, did better percentage wise because they were actively flown in in pretty big fleets there and so they were probably the winners of the imperium war uh what was it um, the whale wars i think they're called uh this time and um as a result i, I do think that at least in the destroyers we'll see this pattern again um of, uh, of of them coming off of those highs and if you want the investments yeah you you'll definitely want to wait um but if you want to sell then this is still the one uh, the one ship type that that you might want to even be looking into producing or selling because Hecate as you can see one year high still selling for 67 million isk bars so at 59 million isk very very good price for the Hecate and percentage wise this is a doubling in price probably well some of the tech 2 ships did really great as well but here you can probably get away with some bigger volumes next up here we've got the jack doll this is the pattern that I'm expecting though uh, pretty soon going back down to 50 million isk 55 million for the sellers, 50 for the buyers. Of course, crazy increase in price because it is such an important doctrine in the Imperium. Went up to 130 million. Let's keep that in mind. And then finally, we've got this Vapel uh, that is probably more in line with my expectations longer term for these. F uh, 42 million for the sellers, 42 million for the buyers. Uh, trying to find a floor, but I think unless more action happens that will slowly go back down then breaking the 40 breaking the 35 and starting to play in this price band once again but we're nowhere near that at the moment confessor definitely great price hecate crazy good price and the jackdaw uh, still a really really respectable price at 55 million despite what you're seeing on the chart right here so uh yeah not bad um i would put these at the most interesting aspect of the uh of the latest war here the uh adopt adoption of these tactical destroyers as uh, as very important doctrines for them especially jackdaw confessor and hecate apparently 
In the cruiser market, we've got the Legion that is now settling. So what we're seeing here is basically uh, CCP intervention jolting the entire market. And then you can see the decrease in volatility. Basically, the Legion settling at 168 for the sellers, 149 for the buyers. Next up here, we've got the Loki. A little bit different because it was the winner of the rebalancing because I think it's double tank bonus for both shield and armor. Went up to almost 250 million, but we can now see that it's coming back in line here. 210 for the seller, still an incredibly good price, of course. 160 for the buyers, though, is going to start to force all of this down a bit to a more average price across the board. Um, so here. Yeah, well, I think we'll start to see this pattern of decreasing volatility uh, show up here as well. Next up, we've got the Proteus. That one settled down very quickly uh, to a, an average price range of 125 for the sellers, 115 for the buyers. Pretty cheap Protei. Definitely the loser of the rebalancing. Uh, Proteus not very popular. And then finally, we've got the Tengu uh, that shot up and actually manages to maintain around 150 million. Not so bad. 150 for the sellers, 144 for the buyers of Tengus. And so this is uh, completely different from the uh, tactical destroyers that have basically found their way into Nelsic doctrines and we see very interesting volatility there. When it comes to the cruisers, um, it's a CCP intervention, it's a change to these ships that has caused this volatility and as a result you get stuff that is completely different across the ships depending on the view of the uh, of, of, of the market and the game, um, uh, what those changes will have meant for the individual ship. So the Legion is definitely um, uh, pretty good increase in price um, and, and only now starting to actually find its place here uh, because of this massive volatility here. Loki considered the big winner of course, went to a pretty crazy price, needs to settle down from that. Proteus, yeah, just nobody really liked what they saw in the Proteus apparently, so just a speculative bubble and then settling at a pretty low price. And then the Tengu, um, after a bit of hesitation, basically the market, I think, had it right here to put it at around 150. Um, people are saying, I think that the Tengu um, is still doing okay, uh, but uh, not necessarily anything all too drastic change there. We do know that the Loki changed quite a little bit, and I think that you can make some crazy legions as well. And so those two would be the winners of that rebalance. And for the extra product this week, uh, 4220 is what I'll take. Um, I'm going to go over the pirate frigates again. I think for next week, I'm going to read through the dev blog on uh, the, um, uh, what's, what are they called? Um, reactions uh, and see if maybe I can spot an interesting, uh, an interesting, um, uh, category uh, to check out the extra product that may be tied to uh, that dev blog but I uh, just haven't had the time to check all of that out just yet and so we're going to go back to uh, some that may be pretty interesting uh, pirate faction frigates let's go take a look at those here is the Astero um, going down in the last few months and currently being sold for 58 million, 53 million for the buyers on the entire chart though, still a bit above average, I would say, uh, despite the pullback in the last few months. So this one um, starting to become basically reasonable in price, but definitely not investment worthy just yet, I don't think. Here we've got the crewer, very interesting that that one is actually shooting up in price back above 50 million and uh, currently being sold for 55 million, buyers are at 45 million ISK, which again uh, I don't think is too interesting as an investment opportunity, but if you can sell some crewers I actually think you're getting a pretty good price for those. Next up here we've got the Daredevil, that is starting to look quite a bit more interesting here. So you can see that we've played with 65 million for quite a while, twice in the last year. But we also have dips down to 50 million. And here at the tail end you see this massive pullback in the Daredevil. Uh, buyers are at 51.5 million, a little bit higher than we would like to see. But if this has any more momentum, the Daredevil could actually be a buy opportunity pretty soon. Definitely one to keep an eye on if you're looking for an investment in this price range. The Tramiel next, very similar again. Two nice peaks in March and in July, but currently 38 million for the buyers. That's below this price range. The Daredevil definitely very cheap. 41 million for the sellers, 38 for the buyers. Um, this looks like a buy opportunity here again. Um, 
I would say, yeah, a couple of dram mills makes sense. Uh, keep in mind, don't buy 100 dram mills here all of a sudden. You're going to pull that price back up. You're going to kill that opportunity. Uh, but this, if you look at this chart and you look at buyers at 38 million, is a tremendous opportunity to pick up some pretty cheap dram mills all of a sudden. Next up, we've got the Garmer. Um, also pulling back and uh, currently being sold for 52 million. Buyers are at 48.6 million. Not as low as we would like to see, but I suspect that this is a buy opportunity or very close to it. Uh, we can we can at least say that the Garmer is uh, cheap at the moment in general, especially if you want to use them. They're incredible ships. Then you can definitely try to buy a couple as an investment. I think it's okay, but I think it's a bit more risky than something like the Dramiel. Next up here we've got the uh, Succubus. Uh, which, uh, while trying to go below 50 million ISK, 50 million for the sellers, 46 for the buyers, 46 for the buyers. Yeah, also starting to look okay. If this has any more momentum, then we're definitely in a succubus buy opportunity. It's maybe a little bit too early to tell here. The margin is basically decently large between sellers and buyers, that it, it could go either way um, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, cheap succubus. If you want to take a gamble on it, you probably can as well. And finally, we've got the worm that is uh, going slightly below 60 million all of a sudden here. So this was probably an above average price. And we are also coming back down from that. So 59 for the sellers, probably a pretty good price. Actually, 55 for the buyers, probably around average. The worm may be considered slightly expensive at the moment, but nothing all too crazy either. And uh, there you go, so the Pirate Faction Frigates, uh, Dramiel, looking very promising. Garmer and Succubus, potentially pretty good as well. Then the the others, they're, they're doable. The Crewer is maybe your one sale opportunity, but all the others are decently um, okay to, uh, to just buy, especially if you plan to use any of these ships. And from that perspective, the Garmer, I think, looks pretty cool, because uh, that is, of course, an incredible um, frigate to fly. Anyways, that's going to be it for if this if talk, guys, because it's take two. It's apparently a little bit of a shorter one. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.